Hello everyone, I am Block Studios and this is the Empire Strikes Facts. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about old Kirk Christian, the man, the legend, the guy who created all the fun little things you see around me. He started the Lego brick, but before he came up with the Lego brick, he actually was a carpenter. As a kid, he loved to play with wood and whittle and do all kinds of stuff like that, and in 1916, he opened his very first shop making household working things like ladders and ironing boards, and he actually made small little inexpensive toys. So he loved to do that, but sadly in 1924, his son burnt down his shop, where most people would find that as a disaster and close things up and just shut it down and give up. He actually saw it as an opportunity to open up a bigger shop and make more things. And with his love for toys, he actually came up with Lay Goat, which means play well, which as we all know it now is Lego. So he started the new woodworking shop, he grew the business, made it bigger, and he made affordable toys was his new passion, his new run, what he went with. He stopped making all the household things and just made ducks and trucks and all these fun little toys. And in 1942, as Germany occupied Denmark, he actually lost his entire factory again to another fire. But unlike others, he was actually well enough established that he could bounce back and actually be forward looking. When World War II finally ended, many of the manufacturing techniques and tools and stuff like that were not readily available anymore. So they had to come up with new ways and cheaper alternatives to make toys and manufacture products thus becoming the mold injected plastic. However, due to the material shortage, the Danish government actually banned the commercial use of injection molding. However, Olker Christensen didn't care about that, and in 1946, he bought Denmark's very first injection molding machine. And he started practicing and using it to tinker and make things and come up with ideas before he could actually sell it on the market. In 1947, he was actually allowed to finally use it for goods to sell. And by 1949, he was making what we like to call automatic binding bricks, which is the predecessor to the Lego brick as we know it today. The automatic binding bricks is not like the Lego bricks we know today. Yes, it had studs on top, but none of the studs had the Lego logo on it. None of them had the little rings in the bottom, and it has two notches on the side. So yes, you could stack them. Yes, you could build things, but there was no real structure. It didn't click, and they were a little bit flimsy if you had them straight stacked. You know, it just is what it is. The minifigures were even different that were used back then, but that is for another episode. With this episode being done, make sure to hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and feel free to comment any other things you'd like us to cover on the Empire Strikes Facts. And as always, guys, stay happy, stay positive, and we'll see you on the next one.